Hello and good afternoon friends. Welcome once again to the CC Edisit Live Lecture. Dear friends, we, uh, we want to say that uh, it is our pleasure that we are carrying a series on molecular biology all for you and uh, so far we have conducted uh, three lectures. This is the fourth lecture in the series. In previous session that is uh, yesterday we talked on DNA replication. We tried to understand uh, what DNA replication is. Dear friends, today also we are going to talk on uh, DNA replication more. We are going to get uh, more insight into the topic that is DNA replication and for this we have again with us in our studios Dr. Varunendra Singh Rawat. He is Assistant Professor in Department of Zoology, Hindu College, University of Delhi. So dear friends, let's welcome our guest Dr. Varunendra Singh Rawat and let's take advantages from his experiences. Hello sir, welcome Hello. to the Edisit Lecture. Thank you. Though we had a very very good insight yesterday on DNA replication and I hope that all the students who might have watched us with the help of this lecture would be better. Benefited. So, for their benefit, uh, we would like you to explain us in more detail about DNA replication. Certainly. So, uh, yesterday I talked about the basic mechanisms of DNA replication. Prior to that, I talked about the historical aspect of DNA replication that how it was found out that DNA replication is semi conservative in nature. Also, I talked about the chemistry of the reaction which leads to synthesis of DNA strands. And then I focused majorly on the enzymes which are involved in carrying out DNA replication and all the other proteins which are involved in this process. So today I'll be moving on from the basic concepts to detailed study of the DNA replication, basically in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. But before I do that, I would like to have a brief summary of the proteins I talked about in the yesterday's lecture. So yesterday, uh, different enzymes and proteins uh, were discussed by me, which are used in replication. The, uh, uh, the major enzyme, the basic enzyme, which is used in replication is DNA polymerase, which has three domains, namely finger domain, thumb domain, and palm domain. The finger domain and the palm domain are important for catalysis, and the cat catalytic site is located in the palm domain. Though the thumb domain is not important for catalysis, still it is required for proper, proper orientation of the primer template junction in the active site. Now there are many types of DNA polymerases, but in eukaryotes the major uh, DNA polymerase which is required for replication is uh, DNA pol alpha, DNA pol delta and DNA pol epsilon. Whereas in prokaryotes, DNA pol 3 is the enzyme which is required for polymerization of nucleotides into DNA strand. The other enzyme which is required for DNA replication is helicase enzyme which has, which has six uh, subunits giving it a uh, six fold symmetry and this particular enzyme, this particular protein is loaded onto, onto the DNA strand, single strand DNA by helicase loaders. The helicase loaders are belonging to a family of AAA plus protein. Which, uh, which utilize ATP for carrying out specific reactions. Now the property of the helicase is that it utilizes ATP to unwind the double stranded DNA because the essential requirement for DNA replication is presence of single stranded regions of DNA. Then after the, after the helicase has unwound a given stretch of DNA, the, the, uh, these uh, strands of DNA are coated by single strand binding proteins. These single strand binding proteins are necessary for maintaining the extended conformation of the DNA and also ensuring that the two strands which have separated, they do not come together by uh, forming complementary base pairing again. After uh, the strands have been coated by single strand binding proteins, another uh, protein comes into function which is known as primase. The primase is the enzyme which helps in making a primer which is basically composed of ribonucleotide. Therefore, primase is a type of RNA polymerase which helps in making RNA primers because DNA polymerase cannot start synthesis of uh, primer strand by itself. It requires presence of pre-existing 3' OH group for addition of nucleotides. 
Hence, this function is carried out by primers. The other important protein is sliding clamp protein, which is loaded onto the DNA by sliding clamp loader, which again is this belonging to a family of AAA plus protein. The sliding clamp, uh, clamp protein has a very important function because it holds, it, it holds uh, DNA polymerase in position and it keeps uh, uh, DNA polymerase from falling off of the DNA strands. Thus, it helps in increasing the processivity of a DNA to a very high level. If this sliding clamp protein is not present, then the processivity of DNA is very low. That means at a single go, it can add very few nucleotides. Whereas because of sliding clamps presence, the processivity increases many fold and on a single binding event with primer template junction, DNA polymerase can add thousands of nucleotides. Other enzymes like RNAs H and ligase are required after the DNA synthesis is complete. As we already know that RNA primer is required for initiating the synthesis. After the synthesis of DNA, after the replication is complete, these RNA primers have to be removed because these are made up of ribonucleotides. RNAs H is the enzyme which carries out removal, excision of these ribonucleotides from the 5 prime end. And after the removal of these primers, there, uh, the DNA polymerase takes over and it starts replicating the gap which has been formed because of removal of ribonucleotides. Then at, at the end remains a nick or a gap between the pre-existing strand of the DNA and the gap which has been filled by DNA polymerase. This nick is filled in by an enzyme, a very important enzyme which also takes part in DNA repair, repair known as DNA ligase. And topoisomerase are the enzymes which are required for unwinding the supercoiled DNA because as the helicase proceeds uh, towards one of the end of the DNA, unwinding the two strands, supercoils are induced into the DNA structure. In order to uh, overcome these supercoils, topoisomerase makes a cut on a single strand of the, uh, of the DNA or double strand of the DNA and it acts like a swivel this rotating the complete DNA molecule so that the supercoils are relaxed and DNA replication can proceed unhindered. With this background of yesterday's lecture, I move on to uh, the today's, uh, today's lecture uh, which basically deals with the uh, uh, detailed mechanism of replication. For replication to occur, there has to be an initiation event that means uh, the DNA has to unwind, the primer has to form. And this takes place at a position, uh, at a position, uh, any specific position of the DNA of uh, eukaryotes or prokaryotes. And DNA helicase unwinds the DNA. This region is known as replication fork. The region which is getting unwound by uh, the uh, unwound by the helicase, and where leading strand synthesis and lagging strand synthesis is occurring simultaneously, is known as replication fork in the replication machinery. Here all the enzymes can be found, the DNA polymerases, the, pri, uh, the primases and, uh, and uh, helicases and sliding clamp enzyme. Now DNA replication can be unidirectional or it can be bidirectional. In unidirectional replication, as seen in the previous slide, there will be one leading strand getting synthesized and as DNA is getting unwound. In the complementary strand, a lagging strand will be uh, synthesized. But this occurs when the uh, movement of helicase is in a single direction. However, when the movement of uh, the replication fork is in both direction, that means when helicases are moving towards both the ends of the DNA molecule, then this replication is known as bidirectional replication. So herein, what happens is that complementary to both the parental strands are synthesized leading strands as well as lagging strands. As can be seen in the present diagram, uh, from the central side if you see towards the left hand side and towards the right, height, uh, right uh, side fork, we see the red, uh, red structures, red arrows. These are the red strand, uh, leading strand templates, whereas as the helicase is moving in the opposite direction, lagging strand are synthesized complementary to the same strand. And same is happening in the opposite strand. Both leading strand and lagging strand are synthesized, getting synthesized complementary to the other strand. So this happens in bidirectional replication. Now I move on to the uh, description of 
prokaryotic replication. The prokaryotic replication is brought about by, by a complex of uh, proteins and this protein is known as DNA, uh, this complex is known as DNA Pol3 holoenzyme. The DNA Pol3 holoenzyme is a complex of sliding clamp loaders and two units of uh, DNA Pol3 enzyme. These two units of DNA Pol3 enzymes are attached to two extensions of uh, the, uh, of the uh, two subunits of the sliding clamp loader of the prokaryotes, which is also known as gamma complex. These two extens extendable uh, or flexible linkers are known as tau protein and they make contacts with DNA polymerases as well as they make contacts with helicases. The gamma complex, which is also known as the sliding clamp loader, is bound to the sliding clamp at its end and it helps in loading sliding clamp at different junctions wherever pri primer template junction is, uh, is accounted, encountered. So this holoenzyme is being used for DNA replication in prokaryotes. Now a model has been proposed for explaining the replication process in prokaryotes and this model is known as trombone model. Trombone is a musical instrument in which uh, we can change the length of the length of the pipe, and this gives uh, musical notes of different uh, different uh, no, uh, different frequency. Herein, an analogy has been made because the length of DNA strand between the helicase and the DNA polymerase, which will be synthesizing the lagging strand, keeps on varying from time to time. That means, at different points of time, the DNA strand which is present between the helicase and the lagging strand DNA polymerase increases and decreases akin to the, it is like similar to the uh, pipe of the trombone. So what happens when, a, when, a, uh, when this particular holoenzyme complex uh, joins the primer template junction, then it starts unraveling the double stranded DNA. As the helicase moves in one direction, one of the strand will be synthesized continuously this will be the leading strand, whereas the other complementary strand will be exposed at small stretches and as these stretches are exposed, primers will be synthesized complementary to them. These primers will be synthesized by RNA primase and late, later on they will be uptaken by the, uh, the replication will be uptaken by the DNA polymerases and small stretches of uh, nucleotides will be polymerized leading to formation of Okazaki fragments. Now as can be seen in this figure that DNA polymerase has successfully completed synthesis of one of the Okazaki fragments and, and uh, more of the DNA has been unwound and exposed. Therefore, primase is acting on that particular site and leading to synthesis of RNA primer. The rate of synthesis or the rate of polymerization of uh, nucleotides is much more faster than formation of RNA primer. So by the time the polymerase has finished the synthesis of this particular Okazaki fragment, RNA primer would have got synthesized at some other position. Now by the time this Okazaki fragment has synthesized, a primer has been formed and more of the DNA has been uh, unwound. As soon as the synthesis of this Okazaki fragment gets completed, the DNA polymerase falls off from this particular double stranded region. And the DNA primase has also been released. Now for effective replication to take place for this machinery to ensure that leading strand as well as lagging strand are getting synthesized continuously, this polymerase should make a connection with the newly formed RNA primer. And because these polymerases exist in a complex together, this is ensured. The, this, uh, the sliding clamp loader helps in loading of a sliding clamp to the RNA primer. And as soon as the sliding clamp is loaded, the polymerase which is already present in this particular complex is loaded onto, loaded onto this particular RNA primer junction. Uh, RNA primer and template junction and late, uh, later on it starts synthesis of the next Okazaki fragment because it has been presented by a free 3 prime OH group. So this, 
So in effect, this leads to synthesis of leading strand and lagging strand simultaneously. This is very essential because single stranded regions are recognized by the cell machinery as an aberration and they might lead to its degradation or repair or cause it to start repairing mechanism in these particular strand. But this, because of this coordination, there is a very less time wherein single stranded DNA is present in the cell. Now for effective functioning of uh, all these proteins and the DNA replication to carry out at a specific pace, there is a coordinated activity of all the proteins which are involved in the replication. All the proteins present at the junction of replication fork are together known as replisome protein or replisome complex. In this figure we can see that the tau linker which was connecting with the two DNA uh, polymerase molecules is also connecting to a helicase molecule. Because of this coordinated action, it is ensured that helicase does not run away from the DNA polymerase and as it unravels or unwinds the DNA, polymerases are able to synthesize at the same pace. Because if it runs away, then there will be regions of single stranded DNA which might be susceptible to uh, damage by the repair mechanism or by other nucleases in the cell. In this uh, particular diagram, we can see that DNA helicase has uh, like run away from the DNA uh, polymerase holoenzyme complex, but the rate of unraveling of DNA by helicase itself is very slow. When it is bound to the DNA pol 3 holoenzyme complex, then rate of unwinding increases many fold. If the helicase runs away from this particular complex, then the rate of unwinding slows down which is very much slower than the rate of polymerization which is being carried out by the DNA polymerase uh, complex. So this particular complex catches up with helicase very soon and again they will be acting in coordination to carry out synthesis of both leading and lagging strands. So effectively uh, the trombone model uh, like explains that what exactly happens how the two strands are getting synthesized continuously. Now for any, any uh, event to take place in a cell, there has to be some initiation point and so is, the, so, uh, so is the case with the DNA replication. A certain initiation uh, point is there in all the D, uh, DNA replications, whether in prokaryotes and eukaryotes and this ensures that DNA replication takes place. Now in each of, the, each of the DNA or each of the genome of eukaryotes and prokaryotes, there are certain origin of replication. The, that is, these are the sites which are, uh, which are going to unwind and initiate replication of DNA. The number of origin of replications can vary from 1 to 1000. Because the pro prokaryotic genome is smaller in size and most of the prokaryotes have circular DNA, they have only one origin of replication. Whereas the eukaryotic origin of replication vary in numbers from uh, hundreds to thousand and that depends on the size of the chromosome. The smaller the size, the lesser will be the number of origin of replication and the larger the size of the chromosome, greater will be the numbers. Associated with uh, the, uh, uh, this particular aspect are certain terms which we need to understand. The first term is replicon. Replicon is basically all the DNA which is replicated from a given origin of replication. That is, from one origin of replication, all the DNA which is getting replicated in either direction, that will be termed as replicon. In E. coli, in e. coli chromosome, which is a circular in structure, there is one origin of replication and this origin of replication by bidirectional movement of the replication fork completely synthesizes the complete uh, completely synthesizes the chromosome of the uh, E. coli. Therefore, the, uh, uh, the E. coli chromosome has only one replica, whereas that might not be the case with the eukaryotes which are having multiple replicons because of, uh, because of uh, large number of origin of replication. Distinct from replicon is the term replicator. Replicator is basically all the set of cis acting DNA elements which, which direct the initiation of DNA replication. That means the nucleotide sequence present in the DNA 
which will help in binding of the initiated initiator proteins and other proteins which are required for unwinding of the dna and start of the dna replication and the third or the most important and the most important term is initiator initiators are those proteins which recognize specific sequences in the dna element in the replicator and activate the initiation of replication basically initiation bind in a sequence specific manner to dna all the other proteins which are present in the replication fork which are required for replication they do not bind in a sequence specific manner whereas initiator proteins are those proteins which recognize specific sequences of uh, nucleotides in the dna and bind there and bring about initiation of replication all the initiate initiator proteins which have been categorized or which have been studied have been found to be regulated by atp binding and hydrolysis that means they are able to bind atp and they use the energy of atp for carrying out initiation with this background i would like to discuss a replicon model of dna replication which basically suggests that dna has specific nucleotide sequences where bind the initiator protein now this initiator protein might recruit other proteins or it might itself cause unwinding of dna in some cases initiator protein binding itself causes unwinding of the dna which then lead to assembly of the other proteins like helicases and primases etc but in some other cases initiator is required only for identifying the region where there should be initiation and they go and bind there and they cause the recruitment of certain other proteins which then cause unwinding of the dna and initiation of uh, replication follow now there are various uh, types of replicators in different organisms the eukaryotic the multicellular eukaryotic organisms uh, the replicators in these organisms have not been studied in very much detail or not much information is present about them because of their large size however we have some information about replicators in organisms like bacteria viruses and yeast one of the uh, the uh, replicator of replicator of e coli which is a bacteria has one one region which is known as orc region which is the site for origin of replication now this orc region has has a repeat of nine nucleotides it is present in five copies adjacent to these uh, repeats are present nucleotides of uh, nucleotides of uh, length 13 and they are present in three copies now the initiator protein of e coli which is also known as dna a binds to the nine nucleotide repeat region and this binding causes the unwinding of dna in the 13 nucleotide repeat region and this is how initiation of replication occurs in e coli whereas in case of sv40 which is a eukaryotic virus that means it infects eukaryotes there are present repeats uh, repeats of five uh, five nucleotides they are present in four copies and repeat of 20 nucleotides which are also known as early palindrome repeats are present in two copies the initiator protein in this case is known as t antigen and it binds to the four repeats that are p repeats and this binding causes causes the unwinding of the uh, unwinding of the dna in the early palindromic region that is the 20 base pair repeat the yeast yeast uh, replicator also has similar type of structure they have a and b1 uh, a and b1 uh, regions of nucleotide wherein bind the initiator protein the initiator origin recognition complex and this facilitate the unwinding of the b2 region of nucleotides so all in all there might be different stretches of nucleotides in e coli or in uh, virus or in yeast but the similar the basic characteristic remain same that they present a site for binding specific site for binding of initiator which then lead to unwinding of the dna and initiation of replication now with this background i move on to uh, describing the initiation of replication in prokaryotes 
as already discussed by me that there are certain sites, 9, more si 9 nucleotide repeat sites and 13 nucleotide repeat sites. In the 9 nucleotide repeat sites, DNA A which is a initiator protein, it binds. DNA A can bind to this particular region only in presence of only when it is bound to ATP. If it is bound to ADP, then it cannot bind it. When DNA A ATP complex binds to this particular region, then there is unwinding or distortion of the DNA double helix in the 13 nucleotide region. This unwinding helps loading of DNA helicase. DNA helicase which is also known as DNA B in E. coli is brought by DNA helicase loader which is also known as DNA C. Now this DNA C comes and joins, uh, comes and uh, comes and gets recruited in this particular single stranded region and it causes loading of helicase in the single strand in each of the single strand. When the helicase are loaded then only they can become functional. When they are bound to DNA helicase loader they are non-functional at that particular time. Once the helicase are loaded then other enzyme that is the primase which will be making a RNA primer is recruited to the helicase and it leads to synthesis of RNA primer. Once a small stretch of primer has been synthesized, helicase is in place, then DNA A protein is no more required and it will fall off from the, fall off from the uh, DNA because its ATP will get hydrolyzed. Now we have a primer template junction, we have a helicase, now there will be recruitment of two DNA pol 3 holoenzyme complex. These holoenzyme complex will simultaneously bring about synthesis of leading strand and lagging strand opposing to both the parental strands. Effectively, this causes synthesis of the two strands of DNA complementary to the parental strands. Certain models have been proposed to explain that how the replicative machinery functions in prokaryotes. It has been assumed that the two pol 3 holoenzyme complex which, which uh, are present uh, which are present in the uh, uh, replication fork they proceed in different direction because helicases are moving in opposing direction. So this model assumes that after helicases have been recruited they move they start moving in the opposite direction and the two pol 3 holoenzyme complexes then start synthesizing leading and lagging strands. In this particular model, is, uh, it, it, is, uh, it is like emphasized that both the DNA pol 3 enzymes of both the, of both the hollow enzymes are required for synthesis of leading and lagging strand in the complementary strand of the parental DNA. Whereas other model proposes that when the helicases are loaded onto the two DNA strands, they stay in position. They do not move away from uh, each other and it is DNA which slides. According to this model, the two holoenzyme complexes which have been loaded at the replication fork, they will be, they, both the enzymes of, the, of a particular holoenzyme will be required for synthesis of leading and lagging strand. But in this case, the DNA pol 3 enzyme of one holoenzyme will be synthesizing strands complementary to only one of the strands. In the earlier model, both the enzyme units were required for synthesis of complementary strands to both the parental strand. But in this model, the DNA uh, pol 3 uh, enzymes are required in, in, in one particular holoenzyme are synthesizing complementary strand to only one of the strand. By experimental evidence, the second model has been favored because it has been seen in E. coli that the DNA helicase stay in a place and do not move from their position during replication. Also in eukaryotes, replication takes place at specific site which also favors the second model that DNA uh, helicases do not move, it is the DNA which moves. And it is also favored by eukaryotic helicase loading machinery which loads a double hexamer of uh, helicase at the replication initiation site. Now, for replication to be effective, it has to be ensured that replication takes place only at specific time points 
in the life cycle of the cell. If the replication is occurring very fast and the cell is not able to divide that fast, then a cell might be having more than one chromosome. Whereas if replication is occurring very slow and cell is dividing very fast, then it won't be having appropriate number of chromosome. So there is a very fine balance coordination and regulation of replication in E. coli. Herein, a specific set of proteins are used for carrying out this particular regulation. In the genome of E. coli are present specific sites which have repeats of GATC sequences. In a non-dividing cell, these GATC sequences have methylated adenine residues and these residues are methylated in both the strands. These are palindromic sequences. After replication has been brought about and a new strand of DNA has been synthesized, the GATC regions or GATC stretches of uh, nucleotides are not methylated immediately. The methylation is brought about by an enzyme known as dam methyl transferase. But as soon as, as soon as a new strand of DNA gets synthesized, these stretches are coded by a protein known as SEC A protein. Now this SEC A protein coats entire GATC stretches and it does not let the DM, DAM uh, methyl transferase to carry out its methylation process. Now there is a delay occurring here and these SEC A uh, protein are present in a large number in the region near to OEC that is the origin of replication of E. coli because GATC sequence are present in quite a large number here. Because SEC A protein is coating this particular region, DNA A cannot come and bind here. DNA A which is the initiator protein, it requires that the nucleotides are not coated by any other protein because if they are coated by other protein, it will not be able to make effective interactions with the nucleotides. And DNA A is sequence specific protein, it binds to a specific sequence. Because the newly formed double stranded DNA is coated by SEC A, DNA A cannot come and bind here, so that DNA uh, replication cannot initiate. Also, DNA A is required as a transcriptional regulator in a number of promoters in E. coli. There are about 300 such sites where DNA A is required. So effectively when a, a molecule of DNA has got replicated, now we have 300 more sites where DNA A is going to go and bind, which effectively reduces the DNA concentration in the cell. So that initiation of replication cannot occur very fast. Thirdly, DNA A can bind to the, uh, uh, to the uh, DNA of the E. coli only when it itself is bound to ATP. The uh, ADP bound DNA cannot bind to this particular region. So after DNA has come into the solution in the cytoplasm, then DNA has to replace its ADP with ATP, which is again a very slow process. So all these three processes combined together, that is binding of SEC A protein to GATC region, non-availability of DNA A ensures that replication of the, uh, the DNA in E. coli is not initiated very fast and it, it, undergo, it uh, takes place in a controlled manner. Now as I had discussed that there is only one origin of replication in E. coli, same is not the case with eukaryote. There are multiple origin of replication because there are various, uh, because there is a large number of replicators in eukaryote. Now either all of these replicators can initiate, initiate replication or it might happen that only uh, uh, few will initiate replication and the adjacent replicators are, are replicated by the advancing replication fork. Like in this figure, the uh, replicator number 4 is getting uh, replicated passively because the replicator number 5 had origin of replication and as the replication fork uh, was moving toward the left hand side, it, uh, the replicator fork also got, got uh, uh, replicated passively. But in the large chromosomes of DNA, it has to be assured that all the replicators are getting replicated, that not even a single replicator 
is stay, uh, stays unreplicated because if it, if it happens so, then there might be problems, there might be mutation, mutations in the DNA which might be having deleterious effects to the cell as well as to the organism. Now, I will be talking about initiation of uh, replication in eukaryotes. Earlier we saw in prokaryote that uh, DNA A is the protein which is binding to a specific region of uh, origin OREC and it is causing unwinding of DNA. Now what exactly happens in eukaryote? Is the mechanism same or it is slightly different? Though the requirement of protein is similar that means certain number of proteins or certain types of protein need to come and bind to the replicator to bring about initiation. The uh, activation of this uh, replication uh, machinery has been uh, compartmentalized in eukaryotic cell. That means assembly of the replication complex and its activation has been, uh, has been divided, uh, has been compartmentalized into different uh, phases of the cell cycle. In eukaryotes, a complex of six protein known as origin recognition complex also known by short form ORC comes and binds to the initiator site of the replicator. This ORC is again ATP binding protein and it recruits two other proteins namely CDC6 and CDT1 to this particular region. CDC6 again is another ATP binding protein which uh, binds ATP and binds to this particular complex. Both CDC6 and CDT1 are required for loading of helicase. Unless these proteins are present in the replicator, helicases of eukaryotes which are also known as MCM27 complex which I discussed about in, uh, yesterday cannot be loaded onto the two strands of DNA. Once these proteins are in position, then helicase will be loaded onto onto the DNA by hydrolysis of ATP of both ORC and CDC6. Apart from these proteins, a number of other proteins are required for initiation of replication. This particular complex of ORC, CDC6 and CDT1 and MCM27 is the pre-replicative complex and it is assembled in the cell during G1 phase of the cell cycle. All the replication of DNA occurs in the S phase of cell cycle, but the assembly of the complex occurs in G1 phase. This complex is typically inactive, it is just formed but it cannot carry out DNA replication at this particular stage. When the cell moves on to S, S phase of the cell cycle, then there is modification in the proteins of this particular complex. Typically. DDK and CDK proteins are involved in this particular process. DDK protein is also known, uh, is the short form acronym for DB4 dependent kinase and CDK is acronym for cyclin dependent kinase. The kinase terminology is used for those proteins which are able to transfer phosphate group for, from the nucleotide triphosphate to any other protein. So these DDK and CDK kinase can transfer phosphate group to these proteins which are present in the pre-replicative initiation complex. Once these proteins are phosphorylated, then they are released from the this particular site that is when DDK or CDK uh, transfer phosphate group to CDC6 and CDT1, then they are released from the complex and this complex gets activated. As long as CDC6 and CDT1 are present, they hold helicase in position, they do not let replication to take place. But once they are out of the complex, now helicase can start its function. Other, other auxiliary factors, other proteins are recruited and also are recruited the polymerases which are required for replication in eukaryotes. There are three polymerases which will be required for replication in eukaryotes namely DNA pol alpha, DNA pol epsilon and DNA pol delta. DNA pol alpha also has another function, it has a domain which is required for formation of, formation of RNA primer. So it has also got primase function. Whereas DNA pol delta will be required for synthesizing the lagging strand and DNA pol epsilon will be required for synthesis of the leading strand. 
After CD66 and CDT1 have moved out, DNA Paul Delta and DNA Paul Epsilon will be recruited first, followed by DNA Paul Alpha. This is done so as to assure that once, once DNA Paul Alpha has uh, formed the primer, DNA Paul Delta and Epsilon are there to take over from DNA Paul Alpha and carry out further replication. After this, after the recruitment of the enzymes, uh, uh, DNA uh, polymerases, now sliding clamps are loaded with the help of sliding clamp loader. In uh, eukaryotes, the sliding clamp loaders are known as RFC. These RFC again are belonging to AA plus family of protein, which are ATP binding protein. They bind to sliding clamps and load them onto the single stranded region, which is having polymerase. Now this entire complex starts moving in the direction of replication fork, effectively bringing about synthesis of complementary strands of DNA against the parental strand. Once this process has got completed, we will be getting two daughter molecules, one of which will be having the parental strand and uh, means both of which will be having one parental strand and one daughter strand. A very important uh, aspect of eukaryotic replication which is not found in prokaryotic replication is polymerase switching. In uh, prokaryotes, DNA Pol3 enzyme is used throughout, throughout the replication. It has got high processivity. Whereas in case of eukaryote, there is polymerase switching. Polymerase switching occurs because initially RNA primer can be synthesized only by DNA Pol alpha as this enzyme has both DNA polymerase as well as RNA polymerase or primase activity. Now after, after the synthesis of RNA primer, this DNA polymerase synthesizes a small stretch of deoxyribonucleotides. It causes addition of small stretch of deoxyribonucleotides, but it is having very low processivity. And if this enzyme is used throughout the, throughout the replication, then it will take a very long duration for replication to take place. However, this aspect is overcome by use of other two uh, DNA polymerases which are very highly processive. That means at one go they can add multiple nucleotide, deoxyribonucleotide. And these polymerases are basically DNA Pol Delta and Epsilon as I have already uh, talked about. DNA Pol Delta is used for synthesis of lagging strand whereas DNA Pol Epsilon is used for synthesis of leading strand and they are highly processive enzymes. That is why there is switching from DNA Pol Alpha to either DNA Pol Delta or DNA Pol Epsilon. This figure shows how, how, uh, how it has been compartmentalized, how the replication has been compartmentalized. In the G1 phase, there is uh, formation of the pre-replication complex that is initiation of the replication and it early phase CD, uh, K, CDK and DDK enzymes cause uh, phosphorylation of specific proteins leading to start of the replication. And in S phase, the complete elongation of the uh, DNA molecules takes place forming, leading to formation of two daughter DNA molecules. Now the DNA, DNA in eukaryote is uh, quite, uh, quite large in amount. It is packed in chromosome. And it has to be ensured that complete DNA is replicated in each cell cycle. No, no portion is left unreplicated and also it has to be ensured that no portion gets replicated more than once. That means in one cell cycle, the complete DNA or the genome of the organism has to replicate only once. This is again ensured by CDK which is a kinase protein. As we have seen that CDK is required for activation of the pre-initiation complex to start replicating DNA. CDK is also required for ensuring that, the, ensuring that this, uh, this particular initiation complex is formed or not formed. Whenever CDK levels are low in the cell, then pre-initiation pre complex can form in the replicator region. And whenever CDK levels are high, this complex will get activated. Now, in the G1 phase of the cell cycle, the CDK levels are very low. Because of this uh, uh, decrease in concentration of CDK, 
pre uh, pre initiation or pre replicative complex can form in the specific replicator site but unless cdk activity becomes high these complexes cannot get activated and replication cannot initiate therefore when activity of cdk is low pre rc can form that is pre replication complex can form but there won't be any activation and when cdk activity is high pre replication complex cannot be formed but the existing pre replication complex can get activated now in the cell cycle this balance is very effectively regulated in the g1 phase cdk levels are very low so that assembly of pre replication complex is favored all the replicators which are going to have the pre replicate uh, pre replication complex will assemble them whereas in the s phase g2 phase and m phase the cdk levels are very high these cdk levels ensure that pre replication complex have been activated and replication is taking place so all in all these phases of the cell cycle that is s phase g2 phase and m phase there won't be any new formation of pre replicative complex when the replication is occurring and one replicator has already replicated orc orc can go and bind there because orc binds to the dna by recognizing specific nucleotide sequence origin recognition complex protein can go and bind to that particular replicator but it will not be able to assemble the pre replicative complex as the cdk levels C, uh, cdk levels are low so effectively it is a uh, tightly regulated process that is uh, replication occurs only during s g2 and m phase and the assembly occurs only during g1 phase now both uh, eukaryotes and prokaryotes though they are using a different mechanism for controlling the uh, regulation of replication still they are quite similar in terms that they are very tightly regulated now once replication has uh, taken place that means the two strands of dna are replicated and they form uh, two daughter strands uh, a major problem is faced the problem faced in eukaryotes is that the two dna molecules the two uh, new dna molecules which are formed they are circular and they are joined at at one end because there is only a single origin of replication in eukaryotes and the replication fork travels in both the direction that is bidirectional replication and the machinery travels and replicates the circular dna into two molecules these two molecules are linked together and the, uh, this particular linkage of two circular molecules is known as catenanes now unless these two molecules are separated they cannot go into two daughter cells for this to be brought about the two daughter uh, the two daughter dna molecules are cut the topoisomerases are the enzymes which are involved in this particular process topoisomerase either make cut in a single strand of dna or double strand of dna and cause the other dna molecule to pass through that effectively separating the two daughter dna molecule the dna which has been cut is religated at the same position now we have two daughter dna molecules and these two daughter dna molecules will be transferred to two daughter dna uh, two daughter uh, cells two daughter bacterial cells this is how uh, this problem is overcome whereas in case of eukaryotes the dna is a linear molecule all the chromosomes are linear molecule though they are larger uh, in size in comparison to prokaryotic dna still they are effectively replicated however at the end we face uh, the cell faces a particular problem and that problem is that rna primer has to be removed from the ends now rna primers is removed by rna's edge once it has been removed as we already know that dna polymerase cannot carry out synthesis of uh, new strands of dna unless it is presented with a 3 prime oh group so effectively if this process keeps on taking place then in each successive round of replication there will be shortening of chromosome at each of the ends at the 5 prime end if this keeps on happening there will be loss of nucleotides and there will be loss of genes there will be loss of genetic material which will be having very deleterious effect on the survival of the organism 
as we can see in this uh, particular uh, figure, DNA ends are getting shortened with each, with each round of replication. Though this does not happen in actuality, this is the model. If, if uh, we go by, if we uh, theoretically go by it, that RNA primers are going to get removed from the ends of the DNA. Now, uh, eukaryotes overcome this problem in a typical and very uh, effective manner with the help of one of the enzymes which I talked about yesterday, that is telomerase. Before I go into a uh, description of telomerase, I would also like to tell about other uh, mechanism of uh, overcoming this problem. This is mechanism is found in certain viruses and certain bacteria which are having linear chromosome. Now, these bacteria or viruses, they use a protein with a free OH group for priming the, uh, priming the uh, addition of nucleotides. Whereas, in, uh, whereas we have seen that in eukaryotes, RNA primer is synthesized and it presents OH group for addition of deoxyribonucleotides. In this particular case, a protein which is having a free OH group is used for initiating the addition of deoxyribonucleotides. So, this is one method, but it is, uh, it does not happen in all the eukaryotes. They use another machinery that is known as use of telomerase proteins. Now, the ends of DNA are known as telomerases. Uh, telomeres and the enzyme which carries out replication of uh, telomeres is known as uh, telomerases. Now, the ends of eukaryotic chromosomes are typically repeats of uh, specific sequences. Now, these repeats are present in uh, n number of times. It varies from organism to organism. And this structure, this particular repeat of nucleotides is uh, utilized by telomerase for carrying out effective replication of the ends. Now, telomerase is basically a complex of RNA and protein. The uh, RNA component is required for synthesis of a template strand and the protein complex is required for the enzymatic activity. This protein component is basically a type of polymerase. It is a reverse transcriptase which helps in synthesizing of DNA strand complementary to RNA strand. Now, this whole complex totally together is a ribonucleoprotein. The RNA which is present in uh, the telomerase varies in length, but it has a specific stretch of uh, ribonucleotides which are complementary to uh, the telomeric and deoxyribonucleotides. So, this telomeres comes and binds to the uh, telomerase comes and binds to the telomeres and forms base pairing with the ends of the DNA. A small stretch is uh, unpaired and this unpaired stretch will be utilized by the uh, telomerase enzyme for filling deoxyribonucleotides complementary to the RNA. Once complementary deoxyribonucleotides have been filled in, telomerase moves from this junction to uh, the other direction, to, uh, it releases from this particular position, again binds to the telomeric end, again leads to synthesis of the complementary strand. And this it keeps on doing for a certain uh, amount, certain number of times till a specific length of telomere is synthesized. So, in this way, telomerase helps in addition of deoxyribonucleotides to the telomeric ends, thus maintaining the ends of the DNA. This figure shows how telomerase helps in addition of deoxyribonucleotides complementary to ribonucleotides. Now, once the end, the three prime end of the, uh, uh, the uh, DNA strand has extended. Now, we are present with a single stranded region. Again, this region can be utilized for formation of a RNA primer and then DNA polymerase again can come and start synthesis of uh, complementary DNA strand. However, at the end, there will remain a small overhanging region of DNA that is known as three prime overhanging head. Now, this end can can be uh, can uh, can be recognized by the nucleases and repair machinery and it can lead to fusion of different chromosomes in the eukaryotic cell however this is overcome by use of specific proteins there are certain telomere binding proteins which have specific functions in the cell in yeast cdc13 protein helps in recruiting telomerase to the this particular junction Whereas, proteins like RAP1 which binds to the double stranded region and RIF1 and RIF2 proteins which bind to the RAP1 protein, they inhibit binding of telomerase. 
Similarly, there are proteins in, uh, proteins in eukaryotes like in mammals, POT1 protein which binds to the single stranded region of the DNA and it inhibits the binding of telomerase. There are other proteins like TRF1 and TRF2 which binds to the double stranded region and they recruit other proteins like TPP1, RAP1, POT1, TIN2 and these proteins together form a, a complex known as sheltering in complex. This shelter in complex prevents, prevents the access of nucleases or repair enzymes to this particular stretch of DNA. Thus, these telomeric ends are not fused with the other, uh, the end, telomeric ends of other types of DNA, other uh, chromosomes. Also, these proteins help in formation of a T-loop which effectively, which effectively is uh, is formed when the three prime overhang it uh, it goes and it uh, leads to uh, leads to like uh, formation of a formation of bonding with the internal region of the telomere so that it is prevented from prevented from access by nucleases and it is prevented from degradation so i would like to finish here and uh, before i finish i would like to give a very good news that uh, today it has been announced that uh, the uh, Nobel Prize for Chemistry in 2015 has been given to those scientists who discovered DNA repair mechanism. Though it is not related to DNA replication, but it's a part of DNA replica, uh, DNA uh, maintenance in the system. Thank you. So I would say this is the very good news, uh, especially when we are conducting a lecture yeah. on a DNA replication. Yeah, though it's a replication, but still, as we are conducting a series-based lectures on molecular well, biology. So I hope that Dr. Varun has added one more input through this lecture and has made this lecture very vivacious, very lively, as well as very resourceful. So dear friends, if you want to make yourself resources resourceful, then uh, I would suggest that you would uh, keep visiting us uh, uh, either through our uh, live lectures or uh, you can definitely visit us with the help of the lectures we upload for you on the YouTube. Um, uh, if you have missed some part of the lecture while viewing it uh, live, then I would suggest then that you can uh, visit this lecture once again as we are going to upload this lecture very soon on the YouTube with the help of which uh, you can make yourself aware or you can be more resourceful. Uh, by uh, by by uh, seeing every part of the lecture dear friends afterwards if you have any queries then you can mail us at info.cc at the written ic.in we would love to solve your queries we would love to take your questions the next time when dr varunendra singh rawat visits our studio and as i said that this is a series based lecture uh, we would be coming and we would be meeting once again and would be discussing more on molecular biology till then take care goodbye thank you sir thank, thank you so very you. much you.